Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a black, red and green or junt colored fight rigging sacrifice deck. I'm always on the lookout for new ways to build fight rigging decks in standard and with the latest addition, Hunted Bone Brute, it's time to dust off our four copies of fight rigging once again. This 3 mana 6 2 has menace, does have a drawback if we cast it normally, our opponent will get two very cute 1 1 dock tokens, but we can potentially prevent that from happening by playing this face down and a 2-2 with a ward first and then turn it face up for one on a black and then when the bone brute dies each opponent loses three life so bone brute in addition to shakedown heavy a 6-4 with menace with a bit of a strange drawback if it attacks our opponent can decide to untap it and let us draw a card instead of taking damage and then we've got the hammer skull another three mana six powered creature with a bit of a drawback if we don't have another dinosaur we have to put a stun counter on it when it attacks so lots of six powered creatures which means we can play them alongside fight rigging, put one plus one plus one counter on them, and then immediately cast our hideaway card for free. And our top end cards that we're hoping to cheat into play include the Skullspore Nexus, which we can also cast for just double green if we control one of the aforementioned creatures. And this will make it so if one of our creatures dies, we get to replace it with a very large fungus dinosaur creature token. And then we can also activate the Nexus to double a creature's power, so that can also increase the size of the dinosaur in the first place. And then we have four copies of Virtue of Persistence, and if we cast it through fight rigging, we're typically going to cast the enchantment half of the card, which can recur a creature from any graveyard each turn, so great in those grindier matchups, but it also counts as kind of a two-mana play against aggro. We can take out a creature and gain a bit of life back, so a very useful split card. And then finally there's Ziatora, the Incinerator, a 6 mana 6-6 six, six flyer. So it's not the most expensive card we could be cheating into play with fight rigging, but at least at 6 mana it's still realistic to hard cast it. And then as a 6 powered creature it also enables fight rigging should we run out of other creatures to enable it. And then at the beginning of our end step we may sacrifice another creature. When we do, Ziatora deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target, and we get to create 3 treasure tokens. So Ziatora has excellent synergy with a Skull Spore Nexus. Let's say we have a card like Hammer Skull on the battlefield, put a counter on it with Fight Rigging, cast a free Ziatora, then on the following turn we can cast a 2 mana Skull Spore Nexus, activate it, doubling the Hammer Skull's power. Maybe it got another plus one counter, so now we're up to 16 power total. Can chuck 16 damage directly at the opponent's face, and then we'll also get a huge dinosaur token of the Skull Spore Nexus, and then next turn we can do it once again, maybe just kill the opponent by attacking with our flyer as well. So that's part of our game plan. Now our deck is pretty slow out of the gates, we've got a lot of 3 drops, which in a meta as fast as standard is sometimes going to be too slow, even if we do manage to play creature and the fight rigging on the following turn. So to try and speed things up, we're also playing 4 copies of Goldhound, a 1-1 first strike menace, pretty decent blocker against a bunch of 1-1 tokens from the Boros Convoke deck, and then we can sacrifice it kind of like a treasure to add 1 mana of any color, so that can potentially let us cast a creature on turn 2, and then on the following turn already cast fight rigging to try and set up our sweet synergies and then to give us a bit more consistency at finding a fight rigging we're also playing commune with spirits which looks at the top four cards to reveal either an enchantment or a land and put it in hand so not only does it find a fight rigging but it can also find a virtue so if we don't have an early play available maybe a turn one commune can find a turn two virtue and then uh, we can also hit our land drops with it later in the game so in this build of fight rigging we're not trying to cheat one with a multiverse or a traxa onto the battlefield which is arguably maybe the better approach but at least we're we're trying something a little bit different here with the Atora and the Sacrifice angle, and at least our spells are still castable without fight rigging, so ramping into the Atora using Goldhound can also be a play we can make, maybe get it out on turn 5, and then it's still maybe in time to make an impact on the game. And then our mana base needs a lot of untapped lands early, so we can cast Goldhound on 1, Commune on 1, and then our Black Removal on turn 2, so that's why we see so many of the fast lands, Black Leaf Cliffs and Copperland Gorge, and then a lot of pain lands lands are also kind of a necessary evil here, with two springs, two Carpluson Forest and four Lanner Waste, and then Deathcap Glade, because we do need double green for Skullspore Nexus, good to have some extra green sources, and then a couple basics, and then a channel lands to offer a bit more utility as well. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? We can play turn two, either Bone Brute or Hammer Skull, but that's where the fun kind of ends. Yeah, let's take a Mulligan. 
Okay, this I can try if Commune finds our uh, fight rigging. We're off to the races. And there we go. Don't have anything going on on turn two, unfortunately. Opponent on Esper. We'll see if it's Esper Legends or a more controlling build. So they know about fight rigging. They could have a counter spell here. Let's just uh, maybe disguise the Bone Brute. Means I won't be able to combo next turn, but it's less likely to get removed by a spot removal spell. And I only want to play fight rigging once we know the coast is clear. Opponent just makes a 2 2 Knight token. That's fine. Time for Rafine. No cut down, and our opponent can pay the ward. Alright, so now we can resolve fight rigging if we'd like. And then hope they don't have removal left for the Bone Brute. And here we'll find another fight rigging over Shakedown Heavy. Alright, pawn goes for Danik, so the graveyards are shut down. So they could still have a make disappear in hand for all we know. Or they might have a go for the throat to answer a bone brute at instant speed. Now if we play it disguised, they won't be able to pay the ward. But uh, as soon as we transform it basically, then uh, our opponent gets a chance to take it out. Yeah, I think I still like disguising it here and playing it slow. It will get a plus one counter, so it doesn't die to cut down anymore. And then I think we just pass. If I play the Virtue, it's not like I can cast a 7 mana half next turn. Their opponent knows what this disguised creature represents. And yeah, opponent does have a go for the throat after all. That's too bad. So we can turn it face up just to deal a bit of damage on the way out. But yeah, playing it face up would not have worked out. And now Hammer Skull can enable fight rigging, perfect. That's why we have so many enablers. Get our author fight rigging going. And that finds Ziatora. And then now take out Denik, since we will eventually need access to the graveyards. So even if they destroy the Hammer Skull, we'll be close to casting Virtue of Persistence. But hopefully they're out of answers. Alright, Danik comes back. And we'll move to attackers. Get our Ziatora. And we'll attack for 9. If our opponent takes it, we could deal another 9 damage with the Ziatora. So then they're pretty close to dead. And with the treasures, we'll be able to play Virtue Persistence next turn. Rafine is fine. And a wedding announcement, so they seem out of answers. And another fight rigging is not too bad. We'll hit probably just a Hammer Skull now. So we've got more creatures to sacrifice. Can play our enchantments. Bunch of plus one counters. Get our Hammer Skull. Attack. Opponent will have to chump, and then Hammer Skull can be sacrificed for another six damage. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and we've got both fight rigging and a creature to enable it. Turn to Virtue, so we hopefully don't get steamrolled. So can't complain. 
Now against Black Green, they could have some spot removal that can interfere with our game plan. The Rookie, I'm happy to take out. And then I'll hang on to Buseju for now. So we'll wait and see how we want to sequence our spells. Preacher, okay. So now I'm kind of leaning fight rigging first and then hammer skull to go off in one turn. And we found virtue persistence. So we just want them to tap out basically. Glissack and destroy our enchantments, including virtue. So that's not what we wanted to see. So if I play Hammer Skull, I get Virtue, they take out Hammer Skull and take out Virtue. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's not like we have any great alternatives here. I guess we can commune. If we hit another Virtue, we can take out Glissa, or I can just take out Glissa with the Scorn to begin with, instead of putting the enchantment in play. I guess that works, but may as well commune first. And found another rigging. Sure. Okay, so it's not a high upside play I would have liked to see. But uh can't let Glissa go unchecked. But if they can take out Hammer Skull, these two fight riggings are not doing much. Okay, Shieldred we can handle. Preacher both makes a token and draws. And a Bone Brute is next. Alright, let's try another fight rigging. This time finding another Virtue. Sure. So we get our enchantment this time. And uh, don't think I'm attacking. Happy to trade for Shieldred now. And Dread Knight is acceptable. And a Rookie. I'll take that trade for Preacher as well. And then next turn we can get back Galissa for starters, and then Bone Brute plus Fight Rigging if we draw a land. Or we can just take the hit for one more turn and get another Fight Rigging down. And in the meantime, get Glissa. Yeah, maybe that's still better for now. Oh, Skullspore Nexus. Okay, sadly I don't have triple green, so I can play Nexus plus Fight Rigging in case we hit a uh, Ziatora. Although playing Nexus right now could be worth it. Hammer Skull just gets chumped by a vampire, so I don't think I bother attacking with it. So let's play the Nexus. And uh, a disguised Bone Brute, so we don't give the opponent more tokens. Then we can spread out the counters a little bit. Maybe just two on the face down card since Glissa already blocks profitably. Okay, so now we can certainly trade off some creatures with a Nexus on the battlefield. Deepest Betrayal could fly over. But we're close to playing Ziatora. Draw. Sadly, land enter stamped, so I need to hit a Ziatora off my fight rigging. Which we did. So yeah, maybe the plan for now is to sacrifice the Hammer Skull after doubling its power with Nexus. And then next turn, transform this. So yeah, let's go for that. Still play my land out. And then, do we put more counters on the Hammer Skull? I think it's going to be large enough as is. And then uh, we'll spread them out on the Bone Brutes. So next turn we can maybe chuck another very large creature. Kaziatora. Rookie triggers. 
Don't think we're attacking with a Hammer Skull since it just trades for a Death Touch creature. Although maybe it'll just jump with a token since they don't want us to get stuff back with Virtue of Persistence. Alright, put on Trumps. And then activate Nexus on Hammer Skull. Sack Hammer Skull, deal 18 to their face. And get an 18-18 Fungus Dinosaur, not bad. Now we have the mana to activate our Bone Brute's Disguise. And even if the answer is Yatora, we should be able to survive and then play another Yatora next turn to combo off. Could make a 36-powered Dinosaur. And the Virtue could also get Yatora back for what it's worth. So we should have most angles covered. Path of Peril. Luckily they couldn't cleave it. So it's just going to get rid of Rookie and the Dinosaur token. And get a 4-4 in return. I guess we could have also activated Nexus, but this seems fine. Get to untap and get back Hammer Skull. And draw. And then uh, the best way to close it out is probably just to double Bone Brutes. And then sack to Ziatora. I guess I missed out on a few extra points of power here by not getting the plus one counters first. But uh, yeah, it's not gonna matter. 25 damage. Could have been 28. And then uh, get a very large Nexus token in return. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand seems fine. No Gold Hound for the turn 3 fight rigging. But uh, Commune can hit our land drops. Or maybe find Virtue to cast on turn 2. Facing a Lunark Veteran, maybe a life gain deck. Alright, maybe just Mono White Aggro. So we'll cast another Commune. And there's Virtue. It's gonna be a while before we cast it. For now, don't think it matters too much which land we play. Okay, Apicure, so it is still a Convoke deck after all. And uh, yeah, we're a little slow to get on the board. Opponent Convoking a Knight Errant on 3. So it's not looking great for us. But uh, they shouldn't have much removal for Hammer Skull. So that can be a good roadblock. Although they can certainly get around it with enough uh, Anthem effects like Evangelist also making Flyers. So yeah, on the draw, with a good but not great hand, I don't think we're gonna get there. But maybe if we get a Ziatora off a of fight rigging, we can stabilize. Opponent not going for Evangelists. So they might have another Knight Errant or a Demolition. So a lot of tokens. Do you have another Knight Errant? You do not. And we find another fight rigging. Well, if their other unknown card is a Recruiter, we're probably dead next turn. Even if we do hit a Ziatora, but uh, yeah, Virtue of Persistence is not going to make a difference. So let's go for it. We did find a Ziatora. But we only have two blockers. Could attack and then... Sank the Hammer Skull, take out Knight Errant. Yeah, I guess that's uh, acceptable. At this point we also have to worry about the case, which can deal damage equal to the number of creatures they control, which is actually enough to take out one of our threats here. Put on jumps. And then end of turn we can sack Hammer Skull, take out Knight Errant. Since with Double Veteran we're not going to burn them out. 
And now we have the mana to maybe cast a 7 mana enchantment to recycle our threats. So are we dead to Recruiter right now? A Warleader's Call also hits pretty hard. Down to 6. So play another Fight Rigging and then maybe just play the 2-mana uh, Virtue to gain some life back and hope to hit big off Fight Rigging, basically. Another Zeatora. Well, it's a little awkward. Might still be worth it just to get one in the graveyard for Virtue. But yeah, I'm not going to be able to attack with Zeatora. And then take out Inspector. The white creatures are a bit more valuable because they're necessary for a Convoke on Night Errant. Yeah, maybe just decline for now. And then sit back. But an all-out attack should still do it here. And Gleeful Demolition. That happens. It's a bit more damage off the War Leader's Call. So even if we hit another creature of Fight Rigging that we could actually put in play, it wouldn't have been enough. So yeah, this seems like a pretty tough matchup if our opponent's got a functional draw. Unless we get the absolute best draw possible with a turn 3 fight rigging combo. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Turn 2 Virtue, turn 3 either Bone Brute or fight rigging. Hopeless Nightmare makes me discard. So how likely are we to Virtue on 2 against this deck? I guess if they have a Bat, I would like to take it out, so they might take the Virtue. Discarding a Bone Brute gives away what we're gonna play face down. And discarding a Land is risky if we don't find more. But maybe one Bone Brute can go, since we'll find more enablers for Fight Rigging. Okay. And it's going to be a Hex Mage next. Good target for Virtue. And Hammer Skull gives us a replacement in case the Bone Brute doesn't get there. Probably going to start with the Fight Rigging, since they're likely to have a removal for my creatures. And then they'll be forced to keep up mana to uh, prevent us from going off with the Fight Rigging, basically. Opponent sacking the Nightmare means their hand's not great. Cavern of Souls naming Demon. Maybe they have a Blood Letter in the deck. And a Shakedown the draw. Yeah, let's just play the Fight Rigging while we can. Even though we may not get an attack in with it. And then grab a Hammer Skull. So if I can stick Hammer Skull, we have two dinosaurs in play. Could be pretty effective. So not the best fight rigging ever, but still pretty useful. Opponent's going to pass. So we'll maybe hit our land drop with Commune. Yeah, I'll take the Copper Line Gorge still. And then if we suspect removal, we can just disguise a Bone Brute. To at least make it cost a bit more mana. And then we can still maybe go for it next turn. Infernal Grasp will cost them two life. Okay. So one removal spell down. We get a few more attempts at it. And there's Archfiend, so that's the demon. Makes sense. Well, we don't have a great answer to it now. But uh, it's our opportunity to get the Hammer Skull in play. And there's a small chance we can outrace it. If we find Zeatora, we can chuck a creature at it to take it out. In Gix's command will take out our Hammer Skull. And Archfiend goes for Lifelink. So that's going to be very hard to outrace now. So next turn we're dead to a removal spell, basically. 
and there's not a whole lot I can do about it. So we still want to build up one creature up to eight power potentially to take out Archfiend. So what makes more sense, I guess, uh, counter on Hammer Skull so that can attack right now. But feels like they have a removal spell in hand which will trigger Archfiend and then an attack for eight will close it out. So yeah, the Archfiend solo carrying the opponent here. Or Bloodletter can double the damage, so yeah, nice set of demons to uh, leverage Cavern of Souls. And that does it, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a very promising hand. Goldhound, turn 2, Hammer Skull, turn 3, Fight Rigging. That's how we set up our deck. And now we'll see what our opponent's up to. And then we can decide if we want to fight rigging first or hammer skull right away. Dark Slick Shores. Yeah, I think I'm leaning fight rigging for now. Since two mana removal is more likely. And then if they keep up removal next turn, we can just play another fight rigging. For now, grab probably a shakedown over Bone Brutes. Opponent passes, so we'll just play another fight rigging. That resolves, and that can grab against control. Skull Spore could maybe go further than Ziatora. Do miss out on the plus one counters, but now every creature we play is kind of a must answer threat. Although I'm sure our opponent has some of those answers. So play Goldhound, play Hammer Skull, and then Goldhound can pick up at least one counter. So yeah, in most other matchups we would have been able to combo off on turn 3. Opponent probably should have waited for the fight rigging triggers since now Goldhound gets both counters. But maybe they have a cut down and it doesn't matter. Alright. Well, we have one creature left. Hopefully they tap out here. They do not, but we did draw another Hammer Skull. So we get a few more attempts at it. Naruti Resurrected to counter, at least we draw. We've got a Ziatora waiting in the wings. Now a shieldred, so coast is clear. Hammer skull up to eight power. Get our free skull spore and shake down heavy. If the order in which we cast the spells of hideaway matters, we can rearrange those triggers, but not too relevant in this case. And now with Nexus, their spot removal is looking a lot worse, as we'll get some tokens in return. Take our draw. Commune, good to hit our land drop. And uh, can make it Boseju, I suppose. So, can go to attackers hit with the Hammer Skull, and then if our opponent takes it, I could double power with Nexus to hit for 16. All that will be tapped, which is not the end of the world if we can resolve Ziatora next turn, but that's not a guarantee. We are slowly dying to Shieldred otherwise. Could also play this Bone Brute phase down. Shakedown probably wants to hang back. We'll go one each. And sure, let's send in the Hammer Skull. Opponent does jump. So they likely have another air tie. Alright, let's just play this phase down. Opponent just activating Mirex here. And a Preacher's next. Get to untap. Draw another Ziatora, that's awkward. Alright, so now what? Yeah, assuming they have another Ertai in hand. We have to be careful not to die on the way back. 
And drawing with a Shagdon Heavy also costs me two life, but if we draw an untapped land, it may be worth it. So I'll just send in the uh, Shakedown Heavy. And then we'll put our counters on the face down card. Draw Goldhound. And then play Goldhound and pass. And they're not even going to activate Mirex, that was strange. So they were maybe keeping up a counter spell like Artai. Preacher attacks. Yeah, we can uh, put a shakedown in front of it. Activate Nexus before damage. And get a nice 14-14 Fungus Dinosaur. Another Preacher's next. Alright, turn this face up. With Goldhound we can cast the Atora. Question is, does it resolve? Now a land could do it too. Alright, so we don't have to show them the Atora before we attack. Question is, what does attack? We do now have an extra dinosaur, so Hammer Skull doesn't stay tapped down at least. So, yeah, maybe counters on the Bone Brute makes sense. Send in what we have. Wouldn't be able to both use Nexus to double power and Ziatora. But I imagine the Ator is going to be worth it here. So token down. That's fine. Draw another Ziatora, which does trigger Shield Root. That's kind of scary. But it's got a double block. Okay, that's fine. So trades happen. Plays the Altora and uh, can chuck our Hammer Skull at Shieldreds. Just to be extra safe. Get another large token. And we've got a Nexus activation at the ready. So, yeah, looks like we managed to outgrind this blue black control deck. And uh, yeah, as you could see, the early removal was able to keep our combo in check. But uh, once we got uh, fight rigging going and actually resolved the creature, the game was able to snowball pretty quickly from there. And also got to see the power of Skullspore Nexus in these more controlling matchups, at least where creatures get destroyed as opposed to exiled. Once you start facing cards like Sunfall, the Skullspore Nexus doesn't look all that great anymore. So yeah, all in all, this is definitely not the most competitive standard deck out there. Has a few weaknesses to very aggressive decks, especially if we have a bit of a clunkier opening. And then go wide decks can potentially swarm us and ignore one or two large creatures. And then, as we mentioned, cards like Sunfall out of the wide control decks can also be pretty tough. So the deck faces quite a few challenges in the current meta, but that's still not going to stop me from playing it, because the deck is a lot of fun when it goes off. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!